we're going to extend this to another level, and that is looking at planes and figures. You're really going to like this because it's not anything new. It's going to be something just tagging on to what we did before. And they have some notation, but we're looking at figures, symmetry, but more importantly, rotational symmetries. And uh, I love this. Uh, they start right in with the examples, but they're going to label. The first thing they do is they label the vertices. And so if we label the vertices one, two, three, and then we're going to perform different reflections and rotations. And then this is the tricky part. Sometimes we're going to be doing reflections and sometimes we're going to be doing rotations. They'll be different, but they can still give us these different permutations. So the set of symmetries obtained in this way are, are going to decide whether we get groups or not. So we're going to start with an equilateral triangle. They give it a term dihedral group three, but it's just an equilateral triangle. And we're going to look at different ways that you could rotate it. Okay, All of these are going to be pretty understandable, but we've got to think them through when we see them in this permutation uh, fashion. All right, first one. Just take a triangle. How many different ways can you rotate this thing? Two. What do you think, Lauren? You can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. You could take this point here and move it one, two, or you could just move it one, right? You could also move it, how else? Three. You could go all the way around three. But you could also turn it the other way, too. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at there are three rotations. Uh, e is an anti-clockwise zero, about uh, zero degrees, meaning what did we do? Nothing. One, so we're going to label this as one, two, three up here. One goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three. Doesn't this kind of put a nice context to it? That's your E. That's standing still the do nothing okay then we could rotate it and they're going anti or counterclockwise we're taking one and moving it to what to two and two goes to three and three goes to one isn't this notation helpful you know we thought it was kind of dumb at first but now it sort of makes sense now, you could do a double spin for each point. In other words, you could take this 1 and not go to the 2, but you could go to 3. And 2 could skip 3 and go to 1, and 3 could skip um, 1 and go to 2. And so that would be what they're calling R squared. So this was R rotation. This is R squared. What will R cubed be? That's E again, going back to E. Love it. So that kind of a nice visual on things. Now it gets cooler. Okay. What else could you do other than rotate it? You could reflect it. By the way, I do want to mention this too. When they talk about anti-rotation, uh, what could you tell me about this one, R squared? In a clockwise rotation. So 1 went to 2, and it skipped to go to 3. It's 1 to 3. 2 skipped 3 and goes to here. What could we also call this? Instead of a double counter, it's a single clockwise, right? So that takes care of the other ones. We're, we're covering all our bases here. But there's other things we could do with an with a equilateral triangle. We could keep one stationary for example uh, they're going to do a reflection about l1 so um, and i don't like how in the in the uh, book here they they uh, changed where <laughs> these points are let's just use mine here uh, one two three and here's the origin in the middle oh and we're going to stick with 
this one being the same, this vertice being the same. So 2 is going to go to 3, and 3 is going to go to 2. So we're going to have 2 going to 3 and 3 going to 2. What's 1 going to do? 1 goes to 1. So we could write this as a cycle as what? 1 goes to 1, 2, 3. Or what's a shorter way of doing it? When we have a 1 goes to 1, can't we just leave it out? 2, 3, right? What will the other rotations be? Well, visually, visually what it's going to be is you could keep 2 the same, and you could go 2 to 2, but 1 will go to 3, 3 to go to 1. What will that be as a cycle? 1, 3. Okay. Uh, you could also do 3 going through the origin, and so 3 goes to 3, so you'll have 1, 2, 2, 1, and that'll be the same as what? Cycle-wise. 3 is the same. 2, 1, or 1, 2, yeah. So what we have here is a bank of all the rotations and all of the um, uh, rotations and all of the reflections. And I would call this a reflection more than I'd call it a rotation. So you had, these were the three, one, two, three. You had um, one, two, three. You had um, two, three, one, and three, one, two. You had uh, two, three. You had three one, and you or one three, three one, and then you had one two. Those were all all six, and you even had e there too. Okay, so and we took care of these already. So when they listed those, they had e r r squared, and then x y and z. Oh, d three is the, that's a good question, D3 is the, no, it's the symmetry group degree 3. Symmetry group degree 3 for an equilateral triangle. Okay, so you have, uh, just a quick reminder though, x squared, y squared, z squared, if you did these twice, you get E again. So that's why we have X, Y, Z. That's one rotation of those, or one reflection. These are the rotations. Good? Are we good with that? Well, got the Cayley table here for D3. So you have E, R, R squared, X, Y, Z, E, R, R squared, X, Y, Z. And then you can see that it's closed. It's associative if you look at it as a bijection and uh, multi or um, bijection, it's going to be associative. Would you want to do all the associative possibilities? How many would there be? Well let's let's just tell me how many though. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six times six times six. Yeah. But we wouldn't want to do that for lots of reasons. No, I'm kidding. All right, so identity. Are there any identities here? Yep. I would say E is definitely an identity. And so since E is the identity, E is an, uh, an inverse of E. What else are inverses? What else? Look at the Cayley table. Yep. X, Y, and Z are inverses of it themselves. And then what are not inverses of themselves but have inverses? R and R squared. Good. Good. So since we have closure, associativity, identity, inverse, D3 is a group. Uh, taking a look at this, do you think it's going to be abelian? there. 
not a billion. Right? No, not going to make it. All right, so, oh, and you asked about D of N are the symmetries, transformations of a regular, and do you know what regular polygon is? All sides congruent, all angles congruent. So that's a regular polygon of N. And they're called dihedral groups because they're regular polygons. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to do this for four-sided and five-sided. That's it. And I'll leave that to you to do. That was three-sided uh, dihedral. Now we're going to do this for four-sided as a group.